The following podcast is a next level production. Truly happy for you, Victor. But last time I checked, you don't speak for this family. Okay, well, it's fine, okay? Marcus totally gets it. He doesn't want a war any more than we do. What are you talking about? He tried to homicide us. So did Lila, and you had a kid That's not the point. Listen, we made a deal. He's going to give back Five's briefcase, and then we're going to get out of the timeline. We're going to meet later today for the, um, the handover. Oh, thank God. That's a rookie move to explain. Hey panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about the Umbrella Academy Season 3, Episode 2. So this week we are going to focus on Episode 2, which is called, or entitled, World's Biggest Ball of Twine. (laughs) So uh, I'm wondering if that's a reference to the actual show or the season this year. It's a big ball of twine, you know? Yeah, it is. It is. It's a big convoluted ball of twine. <laughs> so uh, so do you want to give us a synopsis uh, on this particular episode? Absolutely. Season three, The Umbrella Academy, season three, episode two, world's biggest ball of twine. Uh, with their number one missing, the sparrows take a hostage. Allison makes a painful discovery. Klaus takes five on an eye-opening road trip. That it was, and, and my initial thoughts were, I just loved the episode for the fact that Klaus actually coerces Five to do this. But we get so much more enlightening things within the episode that I enjoy, which pretty much falls into uh, Vanya turning to Victor, mm-hmm. and then the siblings and how they uh, react to it. Uh, we find out a little bit of history about Klaus and his mother, and on top of that, all the other mothers of the Umbrella Academy. Mm-hmm. And then we got Luther and everything else, which uh, engaging with the sparrows because he's been abducted. But <laughs> uh, the the funny thing is, it doesn't feel like an abduction too because of the way he's treated. And on top of that, we, you know, you you see the siblings coming together, and there's a, a cute scene within the actual episode that I really do enjoy between Allison and Victor. And it's it's basically Victor coming out to uh, Allison, and uh, I'm really I, I I know there was a lot of backlash regarding this, but to me I I just embraced it and liked it, and I just loved how fluid it was. But yeah. overall, overall the the episode I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, it was it was a good episode. There was a lot, you know, they they jam pack a lot into these into these episodes, and you know, there's a couple of things that happen. Um, that really set up the rest of the season, and, and I can see the foreshadowing of what's of what's coming. Since we know the entire season, we can we can kind of see. I going back and watching like this, I can see um, this this turn with Allison, and we'll talk more about that when we get into our our moments. But uh, yeah, it just was really good, and and I know I understand the whole thing with Elliot Page, and uh, but man, I. It's fine, whatever. Yeah, it's you know. fine. It's their choice. And <laughs> yeah, honestly, I think the character did this in the comic as well. So that might have been the reason why he. Oh, they, I, yeah, I don't know. They I actually listened. did this. Yeah, so. I haven't listened to uh, to TV podcast industries. They did say I listened to their their episode one, and this is a there is a comic. There's a whatever uh, a, a run of the comic that follows this this story. Oh, okay. Well, I think they they mentioned something about it. It's been changed somewhat, but it's it's a it's it does follow something that went on in the comics. So uh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be yeah. interesting to to see. And when I listen to them, I'll know more about episode two after we get done. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we should get into our uh, I I what what do we call these? We don't call them top fives anymore. I guess our favorite points within yeah, the the, yeah, moments, the show moments moments whatever. Yeah. So you want to start? Sure. I, I want to start. The, the The first one was one that jumped out at me the very first time I watched it in my original binge that I just absolutely loved was the homage to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Ah. You have Klaus, you know, Klaus is running over the start the, the car, yeah, start, start the, the, car, the car, start the car. And he's yep. got all the homage behind him. And I'm just like, that's just like Raiders of the Lost yeah, Ark. Yeah, it was Indiana Jones running yeah. towards the, 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 the plane, the seaplane. The, the yeah, start the plane, start the start plane. The plane. <laughs> and then you have all the 
running him after him. Yeah, yeah, I love that scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I thought that was great. When I saw that, I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that. So, <laughs> yeah, they got a lot of cool references in there too, as well mm-hmm. from other films. So we, we talked about the big ball of twine. Mm-hmm. Think about that. That's pretty much like vacation. Okay. Yeah. 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 I hadn't thought of it. Like, I didn't catch that one, but yeah. And there's like background characters in there that I, I think must be illusion. Like in, when they're in the hotel, there's all these weird, funky background char- uh, characters in costumes that I didn't uh, recognize. But I'm like, that has to be like the one of the guys with the big hat walking around looking like that from Jumanji, the, the guy that mm. the hunter guy that chased him. I don't know if that's what it was supposed to be or if it's some other reference, but th- there was a lot of stuff in the background. Really? You know, that, that's that good I, catches. I, I didn't catch any of that, but that's pretty cool for the fact that it, you think about it, the world is the world is pretty much in chaos, and we do get that when we start to see um, like the city. We get an overall view, mm-hmm. and the lights go out, and they dim, and it's Diego, his quote-unquote son, in in the lobby, and he has to get him his ear medicine. <laughs> But the lights go out, and you see a whoosh, and it's like a, pow- a cloud or or whoosh of uh, wind, mm-hmm. and and like throughout the city. And then you get the same thing too during the time when the cows disappear, and mm-hmm. that's why the Amish are actually chasing after Klaus because they think they they did something to their cattle. Oh, okay, that could be. I hadn't even thought about that being being the reason but yeah that definitely could be could be it but i know you know that's that's in one of my points so i'll talk some more about this later too sure uh one of my points uh well the first one i should ha- say is uh the sparrows taking luther who's mm-hmm. there you know the umbrella is number one and he feels that it you know it, it, he feels that it's hostile because the way they took him down as he was running he was doing his little run, jogging. He leaves the hotel, and everybody's like, "F you!" And he's like, "Oh, okay. Have a great day." <laughs> and, then, and then we hear, uh, "What was it? Uh, was it the Iggy Pop, the passenger that yes, was playing at the time?" The passenger, yeah, yeah. That's that's what started the show out. And then Phase Crows are following him, and he sees it. And then you see uh, the cube. I forget the kid's name. Christopher. Christopher. There you go. And mm-hmm. they all attack him. And then the girl that could levitate or move things or even herself. Yeah. Uh, and then they literally just like knock him out and take him home with him to the Sparrow Academy. But he wakes up and he, he they treat him very nicely. He has yeah. a nice good breakfast and he's like, wow, after he drinks the smoothie. <laughs> he's like, wow, yeah. this is amazing. Yeah. They talk about how uh, how to get Marcus back. Mm-hmm. And they, they mention how, uh, you know, Ben states to him that he goes, oh, well, you know, if you don't comply, you know, Faze Crows will peck out your brain and nest in there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we see how the sparrows are treated nicely with all the cool stuff that they have. And Luther is enjoying it because it's so bright in there. It's not doom and gloomy like it is in the Umbrella Academy's house. Yeah, at that time, it, it, this is like a like a Fantastic Four mansion where they had like cool like exercise machines. They have their own theater room. They have all the cool foods that mom brings them. Mm-hmm. You know, even though mom's a robot, and they he gets a gift basket or a yeah. gift bag. Yeah, they give at him the a, end. Yeah, they give him a swag bag at the end. And don't forget to take your, take your bag. You know, <laughs> and it's like, wow. Uh, they have endorsements in comparison to the umbrella Academy. They didn't have any of that. So they have their own billboards out on the streets. Mm-hmm. They are praised by the community. Uh, I, I think this is a complete opposite of what Hargreaves said with the umbrella Academy in comparison to what the sparrows are it's more corporate america if you think about it it's like they're very much exploited oh yeah uh, yeah and uh i just love how ben tells uh, i'm forgetting the girl's name but he tells her was it simone which one the the levitating girl or yeah the, the levitating girl sloan yes yeah, sloan sloan, sloan. sloan. yeah oh sloan yeah he tells sloan that he was on the moon and he she loves the idea Mm-hmm. And he's like, nobody really cared. And it's like, uh, it's like he's smitten yeah. right off the bat with her. And I, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, I loved it. I, I love that whole scene between them on the treadmill. And then later when she tells him, you know, that 
they're kind of that they're always being watched and it, it's just they have these inside jokes that they don't that he's not in on but he kind of kind of tries to, to join in on him you know um <laughs> I, I thought that was just hilarious the way the way they're like yeah he's saucy and they all laugh and he's like, oh, he wouldn't get it you know and but then later <laughs> like i said um sloan kind of reveals that there's a little bit more of a a darker side to this yes. You know, and then yeah. at the end, of course, when they when they let him let him go, she then levitates him back into the building. And I love I didn't catch it on the first the the first time watching, but there's a brief we get a brief glimpse of Hargreaves watching TJ Hooker in, yep. the, in his, oh, yeah. in his little room there. And so we're we're again we're seeing these little flashes of the fact that, that this is not the Reginald Hargreaves that we know, but there's something wrong with him. There's something different there. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He loves his TV. They lock him in a room, obviously. Mm -hmm. And he loves his TJ Hooker. Yep. I'm surprised he didn't watch Star Trek. <laughs> considering, <laughs> you know, he's an alien. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I do. Uh, I did admire that. And, and the fact it's like, you know, the fact that she Sloan brings him back in and mm -hmm. they have a night together. And... Yep. It was pretty interesting, and it's it, it's really good for Luther too because he's always getting beat up, and he's always emotionally stuck. Like for a long time, it was all about Allison. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think of the previous uh, seasons that we got, the two seasons, and now he's finally found something, and he's kind of spent with this girl. So I, I think it's pretty cool, and they're yeah. not related, quote unquote, <laughs> as it were. So I, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great. I love the the that whole interaction between them, and like I said, the fact that we see them kiss, and then later he's going to tell, uh, say something to Diego about having sex with in the air or something like that uh, in, a, in a later episode. So, uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, it's it's funny because, it, like you said, Luther really was emotionally stunted for a long time, mm -hmm. and then he had that little tryst with Allison in season two. Um, or season one, I guess. Season one, and 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 then he had his obsession with her mm -hmm. in season two, and that was the whole point of him wanting to get back to her in season two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, it, but it, now he's got Sloane, and now and by the end of it, he's going to be searching for Sloane as well. So correct. Uh, uh, so uh, one of mine. Oh, go ahead. Were you done with that know. one? Yeah, I'm done with that one. Go ahead. Okay. Go with yours. Uh, let's talk about. We already kind of alluded to it a little bit. Five and Klaus's little road trip. I thought was was great. <laughs> uh, I love it. I, I, you talked about the fact that the five, he notices the lobsters missing from the tank and mm -hmm. he just kind of disregards it. Cause he's just like, oh, okay, whatever. Maybe they just, whatever. And he doesn't really think about it. Cause he doesn't, you know, he wants to retire, but then of well, course, he is when, retired in his head. Yeah. In his head. <laughs> but then of course, when the cows, when the cows disappear, he's like, can I just get one day off? You know, <laughs> cause he realizes that something's going on. And then of course we get the scene in the car where Klaus tells him that his mother was killed or his mother died before he was even bored. And, yes. and five stops the car and goes, what? And of course, then they get that book from the one girl and she tells, and he, they see that all their mothers died before they were born. And we get this moment at the end of this episode, that's going to tie right into the next episode, I believe where he talks about the grandfather paradox. He says, we've just, we, we've created the time paradox and it's the worst one of all. It's the grandfather paradox, but we were left at that in this episode. The next episode, we'll get the, the whole story or the history of what a grandfather of paradox what it is. is. See, I just, I just love the whole thing yeah. about that. He's it's, it's that whole, that whole issue of, you know, I thought I was out and they pulled me back in kind of thing with five. Yeah, It's you know? like, they pulled me back in. Well, exactly. I, I think he thrives for that. I think that's just his personality. Mm -hmm. He loves that regardless, because you have to keep in mind still, he's, he's an old man and a little young person's mm -hmm. body still right, <laughs> right i don't think a lot of people remember that fact <laughs> yeah yeah he was like 60 or 80 years old something like that but that he lived an entire life yeah you know, before coming back and turning into his younger self so yeah yeah uh next one up we already touched on this a little bit in the very beginning when i mentioned it that would be uh vanya looking up the inf information about what happened during that day in 63 looking at you know, apparently it was like some sort of uh, historical book mm -hmm. and it had their pictures. They had everything. And she was going through her memories in, in some way and feelings of what happened to her and that woman. Sissy. And, Sissy. Yep. Yeah. And, and her son and how she had to be who she was. 
then she makes this huge change. Uh, she sees kind of like men's haircuts on a poster that looks like something straight out of the 50s anyway. Mm -hmm. And she gets that haircut. Then she makes the uh, trip over to her siblings and uh, minus Luther and Allison at the time. But uh, then she just states, no, I'm Victor. Yeah. And the siblings, you know, accept it right away. And I thought that was well, very well written within the show in a sense of like, okay, well, we know this person all our lives. We care for them. Whatever they say is what they are. And okay, fine. So be it. Yeah. And Diego, Diego five and Klaus just kind of roll with it. They're just like, okay, you know, Allison wants to get a little bit more information. She, and obviously yeah. he wants to tell her a little bit more because he wants to explain what happened. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a cool yeah, reaction I, I thought, they had to it. And then on top of that, to top on it, that that was my favorite moment and emotional moment within it was Victor telling Allison about themselves mm -hmm. and how it was. And basically Allison saying, we kind of knew, but we accept you for who you are and how you are and whoever you are. Mm -hmm. And that's true family. And, and there's a lot of people out there that state, you know, blood family is the only family, but honestly, family is, you know, whether, you know, I accept my family who they are, whether it be blood or not, but, I, you know, I'm brought up with my sisters, my brothers, my mother, my my brother, my sisters, and my mother, mm -hmm. and uh, my cousins and everybody else. That's family. That is family. But there are some families that you brought into, into this world from friends. Yeah, and they they were all adopted by Hargreaves as, and then they were considered siblings, and they are family, in my mm -hmm. opinion. And they they do accept Victor as a brother, Klaus, uh, Diego, Luther, Allison. Well, Luther, and not yet. Luther's going to find out in the next episode. Exactly, and he kind of rolls with it as well. He's but he he's kind of you can see that he's well. That's the next episode though. That's not but he's episode. also excited too in that one too mm -hmm. as well. But the funny thing is, is uh, did you notice how uh, Vic uh, Victor is dressed? It, it's kind of like a greaser look with the white t shirt, the leather jacket, and the hoodie underneath. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, and and the and the haircut that that they have. I thought it was pretty cool, but I'm like. There's got to be something to this. I'm curious if Elliot Page had something to do with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be interesting to, to, to see. Um, yeah, that was a great that was a great moment that you know she finds in that book, the Kennedy Six, where they obviously the world thinks they had something to do with the Kennedy assassination, yeah. and and so that's that's really cool to, to see all those old pictures. And like you said, she sees that Sissy, and it's kind of inconclusive about what happened to Harlan. And of course, we're going to find out later what happened with Harlan. But yeah, I thought that was a great moment. Um, the next one for me is, is it's kind of a short one. We've talked a little bit about it already, but we're seeing Allison beginning this dark turn that's going to culminate at the end of the season with yes. what she does. And we see her, you know, she's drinking more. She's having these glimpses of, of Claire. She's she's having these these day night, day mares or whatever you call them. Yeah, where, like, especially she's remembering yeah, at the diner. Mm -hmm. when it's like your kind is not allowed here right and yeah. she realizes that's just a flash that was just a, a whatever a memory a, day, a daymare or whatever you want to call it and then yeah. she sees harlan and she mistakes him for that guy but then harlan gets away from her and we know it's harlan she doesn't know yet but mm -hmm. you know that's the other thing that we're going to find out later is victor doesn't see harlan and because victor's going to recognize him right away and, and figure out and know who he is right away yes right so, away yeah, so I thought that was interesting that we got to see a, a little bit of a glimpse of that Allison, the beginnings of where Allison is going to go by the mm -hmm. end of the season. You you already topped on this, but I think it's still funny to this day. Uh, is Klaus's journey with five, mm -hmm. and yeah. and the road trip itself, and like I said, uh, there's like kind of like that uh, National Lampoon's vacation quality about it, and you have that like Indiana Jones reference to it as well. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he uses Thelma and, Lee's, uh, Thelma and Louise as a reference about the journey, he goes, you do realize they're dead in the end. <laughs> you yeah. know, five we says. hold hands. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> but I, I, it's like, I still love the fact that, you know, five is all about the whole touristy, corny sites that you would go see on the roadside. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's like, oh, I would love to do that with five now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that was great. And, you know, again, that's another one of those emotional moments where we get five 
and Klaus kind of bonding yes. and five going, okay, let's go find your mom. And Klaus is like, Oh, thank you. Tiny dancer. Or he says all these nice things about five. And he says, what is he? He says something like, now you say nice things about me. And five's like, let's just go find your mom. And like, exactly. That's, that's the nicest thing that five could say to him though. Cause that's what he wanted all along was just, I want to go find my mom. So I, I thought that was another one of those great emotional moments. And, and during that, the, uh, the song that was going on within the car as they were driving was, mm-hmm. Uh, Bretton Woods, Oogum Boogum. Yeah, yeah. And then what's so. the country song that he's listening to at the end um, in the car? That one, we didn't talk about that one. Uh, hmm. the, there, when the cows disappear, there's a country song that he's singing along with at the end. And oh, I, th- I'm, I think that's the Engelbert Humperdinck song. No, no, that's the Quando Quando one that's during the fight. The, the oh, Diego okay. fight. No, the I, I don't see anything of that. Yeah, okay. that's weird. Maybe it was a made up. Maybe it wasn't a real song. Maybe it was made Probably up. Probably not. Yeah, the show. But I don't know. I have to try to research that and find out for the next time because it was a, it was an interesting song. Um, but yeah, one of the one of the other things for me that I really had to work this out. It took me all three viewings to really piece this all together. Was what's going on with with Lila and Five and these briefcases? And so yeah. I realized that okay, so so Lila had her own briefcase. Mm-hmm. Five had his briefcase, but he leaves his briefcase at the Sparrow Academy. Mm-hmm. And so we see Lila with her briefcase. And when it doesn't work, she's outside. She's, you know, she's at the Central Park or wherever, whatever park she's in. And she's trying to get it to work and it won't. And so she just trashes it. Oh, she, she destroyed that thing, and just, everybody's just, hearing her curse, and they're like, oh, yeah. hold the kids' ears. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. Earmuffs. But, <laughs> but then we go to the academy. She goes to the Sparrow Academy, and this was the only, again, this is one of those disconnects for me. How did she know that there was a briefcase at the, I don't remember if she was told in the first episode or if, if Diego may have said something to her, but why did, how does she know? Yeah, I was, I was curious about that, too, because um, she was able to get uh, Sloan's power right to she, get that right yeah and yeah she, that's that's another interesting point that we don't know what the the distance ratio of her power is because she's down on like the ground and mm-hmm. S- sloan is at least two stories above her yep. and she's able to siphon sloan's power and then fly up to the roof and then she obviously gets close enough to Faye because then she gets Faye's power yep and and goes and gets the the that briefcase and retrieves it. So we don't really know like the what the because again this is another another moment at the in one of the last episodes where she's locked in that room and she's just waiting for somebody to walk by who has enough power for her to break break herself out. Hmm. You know, and and so I guess she doesn't retain the other people's power. She can only do one power at a time. I'm yeah, not- it, it's very it's very different. Uh- yeah. Yeah, the, I I always reference was Rogue, it Rogue, yeah, Rogue, and and the X Men where she can only take it at a time, right? But even though she sucked in all of Miss Marvel's powers mm-hmm. and has all of Miss Marvel's powers in some of her memories, but the fact is that through touch she was able to do that, and according to this, Lila is able through distance mm-hmm. acquire those abilities depending on how far away they are, but. You would think it's like, all right, she's on the first floor and Sloan is all the way up on, like, what, the third or floor floor? Yeah, up above her somehow. And like I said, it, so we don't really know the, the what the, I don't know what the... Uh, the ratio uh, radio, is. Of, r- yeah, radius. Radius of her of her power yeah. is. Because like I said, we're going to see later on in the season, she's going to have a moment where she's trapped and she's just waiting for somebody to walk by who mm-hmm. has a power that she can siphon. So it's 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 weird. It's a little inconsistent, you know, and so yeah. that's... It, but you know it's okay. So she gets. So she now has the second briefcase. So the Sparrow mm-hmm. Academy doesn't even have the briefcase, and they're going to discover that I think in the next episode that they don't have the, the briefcase at all. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's just a, it was just a really one of those moments that it took me three viewings to really piece the whole thing together of what happened with these briefcases, you know. And then eventually she and Five are going to try to work on the brief the briefcase that he that the only briefcase that's now left. Yeah. I, it's making my head hurt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another point that I really like to bring up is that whole fight scene with Diego 
and the two Sparrow Academy mm-hmm. members, Alfonso and Jamie in the pharmacy, because yes. he had to get his son. I'm forgetting his name. Stanley. But Stanley. Okay. So you get, he, he goes, yeah, uh, it leaks out and I don't have my medicine and it smells like cat puke. And he goes, dude, uh, it's like, oh, so he has to go get him. He goes, no, it's not the right one. And then he, they, Alfonso and Jamie are there shopping and apparently they could do whatever the, whatever they want within the pharmacy because they're like taking candy just taking it and doing whatever they want and all because you know you know diego winds up encountering them because of stanley Mm -hmm. and uh it's pretty funny how with like the the interaction between diego and alfonso Mm -hmm. and how they're talking and alfonso is kind of a weird character because he's kind of like a demon looking kind of guy because it's kind of mushy face and it drips and you know the flesh kind of just sags there yeah yeah like when his when his when he when his chin it, flies yeah. off he goes yeah it does that and i'm just like ew, this ew. Guy. And he's yeah just like a like a a big and i don't know if maybe it's it like clay or something because you know that's you know again his power is that whatever harm is done to him it's it, done to the person who that, does it Right, and it's not yeah. just kinetic. Like I thought in the in the first episode, I thought it was just kinetic. Like when they punch him or kick him, but no, when the kid throws that blade knife and and cuts him, then the kid suddenly has a cut on his yeah. leg. And I'm like, well, how does that work? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, Stanley throws that knife that from Diego's uh, leg pouch or whatever mm-hmm. it is. And on top of that, let's talk about that. That's interesting because Diego's walking around with these two things, which are literally dagger holders on his legs and all day long and nobody says anything <laughs> yeah you know here here in oklahoma we can we can open carry and we can open i think we can even open carry knives so it's it's there's places where they can just do that you can just well now and also new york you can't <laughs> yeah i know and, and probably wherever they're at you they probably shouldn't be able to but you know who knows what this world allows and doesn't but allow. I, yeah. I thought it was pretty cool the overall fight scene though you know, because, you know, you, you already mentioned it, like, Diego attacking Alfonso, he gets hit hard in the chin and everything. And then on top of that, we got Jamie there with her, I th- it's kind of like a, um, some sort of venom that induces hypnotics. Right. We said, we talked about it. We talked about it last episode. She got yeah. Diego and she got five. With it yeah. this time, she doesn't get anybody because anybody because yeah, Stanley uses like a, a spatula or a pan to deflect it, and he yeah. gets gross, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but the fact is that you see how it comes out of her mouth, uh, yeah. it's in the back, there are like two sacks in the back, right and left, and she has to hold her tongue through and then it's squirted out and yeah. then just ejects out. And we, we got a whole POV of how that works, and I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was that was a really cool like camera shot that the CGI they did that I thought was really really fun to see how that worked. But again, it's one of those powers that if it works great, uh, but if it doesn't, then she can fall back on her fighting ability, which was which was good. I loved when when Diego and he picks the kid up and they're they're leaving. And the kid's like, "Hey, we're kicking their butts," you know. And, and Diego's like, "He who he who." Uh, Fights and runs away, lives to fight another day. That sounds like a pussy saying, you know. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, oh my goodness, this kid. Um, yeah, it's 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 funny. Also, there is a moment during that fight scene when Diego, uh, when Alphonse uh, hits Stanley, that Diego calls him his kid, even though he's been saying allegedly and yeah, you know, presumably this moment he says, "Hey, that's my kid." Yep. So he's really starting to bond with this this kid, and we're starting to see again the beginnings of what the, is going to develop throughout the rest of the the season. And I, I'm I'm excited to to watch again this relationship play play out uh, and see the the inklings of it here. Because you know, just like like you said, he he goes to the to the store, and the kid wants a specific brand. He's like, just get the no name one. Hey man, have you ever had your whatever? And he's like, no. Then you don't want the no you don't want the no name. You want the brand, my brand. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, that that's it for all my points and my thoughts of uh, what I liked about the episode. But I have a few other notes and some quotes. 
that we should sure, get into. I've got, I've got quotes. I think I've gone through all of my, uh, you know, the, the again, I, I was talking about the, the kind of the background characters. We see one guy who's like in a, a weird, like a uniform. And then we see this couple walking and they almost look like a 1960s kind of couple where she's got sunglasses on and he's wearing like a hat and she's got one of those pillbox hats on i don't mm. know what that was about I, i'd love to research and find out kind of who those were alluding to but in and of course you mentioned about the the doorman when luther says hey it looks like a great day and they're like, yeah for some because you realize, <laughs> remember his dog went missing in the first episode when that wave yeah went out and then you see all those posters of missing dogs on uh, on the the lamp poster and the the, the different the different place where luther comes out so yeah uh hmm that's all for my notes. I've just uh, got quotes. Oh, oh well, uh, I'll move on to my other notes. So, uh, in the very beginning of the episode, when Luther's being um, basically abducted by the sparrows, and his feet are up, and you see his sneakers in the bottom side of Luther's right, sneakers. There's the logos. I forgot to put that. In yeah, there. yeah. I have umbrella and sparrow on on either shoe, so it's like right shoe umbrella and left shoe is sparrow. So yeah, you got the emblems there. Uh, we already talked about the missing lobsters and the wishing of the wind and energy and all that cool stuff. But uh, one thing which was I, I thought was pretty cool for the fact that when Klaus was in the hotel room and oh, yeah. he, he breaks open his shoe with like a hidden compartment in his shoe. It just reminded me out of a G.I. Joe Marvel comic issue where uh, Snake Eyes and Quinn and the dog were held captive at one point. But, you know... I think Quinn does it with his boot and there's like a hidden thing and he's got like a built-in saw or something. But the fact that, you know, Klaus had this hidden compartment where he hid a note with all the information mm -hmm. of of his mother that he could yeah, go the find. Check stub. Yeah, yep. the check stub. Yeah. And I thought that was pretty cool. But I was like, I was like, uh, as soon as I saw that, I was like, wow, it reminds me of like a, a Marvel comic. And like, I had to go back in my memory and go, yep, that's where it's from. Yep. Mm. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, that's about it for, for notes, but, uh, I have a, a few quotes. I, I do as well. So, so I'll start with mine, which is the first, which, uh, would be for Vanya before she became Victor and the, uh, hotel clerk comes up to her as she's looking at the book and finding it about, the uh, the, the 63 incident and all of them. And he goes, we we take all kinds here and yeah. i'm like okay so basically that was like a, a setup for us to see that there's going to be some sort of transitional oh that's interesting yeah i didn't, didn't even didn't even catch that very good um the first one i've got it's really just it's a kind of a conversation between five and klaus when they're there when diego's talking about lila and and five says she's family and klaus says she tried to kill us like yesterday and five says yeah like i said family and it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I just thought it was great. That he's like, she tried to kill us. Yeah, that's what our family does. Our family tries to kill each other. We exactly. Oh, I, thought it was great. <laughs> I thought that too. Uh, Klaus saying, he's like, I need to get out of here. And that was at the, uh, I think at the bar in the hotel. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I need to get out of here. I almost died from Luther's sleep farts. <laughs> yeah yeah that was great uh the other one is that uh when he's in this with sparrow academy luther when he's waking up and he says mom and the grace says why do people keep calling me that as she's humming onward christian soldiers because you know she believes that the fireball in the basement is god and so she's she's humming this onward christian soldiers why do people keep calling me that <laughs> uh last one i would have would be stanley going oh that girl was going to hork on you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that was to Diego before, uh, because of the spit from Jamie. <laughs> um, I have two more. The one is from Luther when he's talking about the Umbrella Academy and comparing it between the Sparrow Academy and the Umbrella Academy. And he says, well, discipline was never, has never been our strong suit. It's pretty much a free for all over there. <laughs> well, that was, he, he was telling them that he didn't know. And then nobody ever tells him what's going on. And like, you're the number one. You're supposed to know. Know everything, um, you know? Yeah. yeah, I know. And then the, the last one I got is, is from Diego. And it made me chuckle every time I watched the episode right before they're starting that fight in, uh, you know, Alphonse says something like, what a quinky dink. And he, <laughs> Diego says, only dink I see here is yours, tough guy. 
And then they just kind of look at each other like, <laughs> what? What? So, yeah. 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 It, that made me chuckle every time. I was like, I got to include this one. The only dink I see here is yours, tough guy. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, that's all I had. Um, I was just checking out any email that we might have had. We don't have any. So uh, I, I guess we can move on to other stuff. So what's next on the agenda? I got to look. <laughs> uh, do we have any news? I don't think I've seen anything big. Nothing really big. Uh, the only thing that I would say is newsworthy is Sandman released on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. Um, yeah, and this might be a little bit of a spoiler, but I think we might have already talked about it. The She-Hulk, the final trailers for She-Hulk dropped uh earlier this week and last week and it definitely shows okay go ahead about 30 seconds if you don't want to hear a shield spoiler it's yeah coming next week so uh but in the trailer it shows daredevil oh yeah and it shows charlie cox so i think uh that's that's really cool that's cool too yeah um i'm looking forward to that 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 is the most important movie or show that i'm looking forward to right now Mm -hmm. uh, I can't wait for us to uh, start talking about that because a, a lot of people are giving flack about the CG on it. Now, mind yeah. you, Hulk looks pretty cool. Banner looks good. Her, not so swimmingly, but they still have time to, like, you know, smooth everything out. And as the uh, promos have been going, they've been looking a little bit better and better. So okay. uh, I'm looking forward to it. Either way, I, I think overall what really bo it boils down to is the story and how it's being presented. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you know, just check out I Am Groot on Disney Plus because that launched too. That There's like about five or six short movies, five minutes oh, long. nice. So you can check those out on Disney Plus as well. So we got a little bit of something from Guardians of the Galaxy as well. Very cool. All right. Well, uh, like I said, uh, there was no feedback or anything, whether it be email, Facebook, or anything of that nature. Nothing on Instagram. Yep. Yeah. So we didn't get anything, but uh, we still highly recommend that you guys send something in if you do like what we're doing. Uh, I do have a podcast recommendation this week. Sure. Um, I've been listening. To, I've been rewatching Smallville, and uh, Michael Rosenbaum and Tom Welling are doing a Smallville rewatch podcast called Talkville. Yeah, they, it took them just, about time to do it, finally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they both, it's 20, been 20 years, and so they said they're both, the, it's been great. The first uh, five or six episodes are out now. Uh, they had one where they brought in Christian Krug for uh, an episode, for part of the episode. Uh, I did send them a voicemail question, so maybe Ooh. that'll get played if it got if it got into them on time. They don't really tell you what their deadline is mm. or uh, these questions, but they have a hotline they want you to call and ask questions about the episodes, about upcoming episodes. So we'll see if I got mine in uh, on time, but uh, that'll be cool to hear when that, when that episode pops up here. I think next week it should be. Coming. Awesome. Cool. I got to start putting that on my list too. And it's kind of like a rewatch. I already mentioned it before about like, what was it last year when uh, Kristen Bauer and um, mm -hmm. uh, I forget her name now from uh, True Blood. They were uh, they were doing a, a true truest blood podcast, and it was starting with season one. They haven't gotten on to season two yet, but I'm still waiting on it. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. But it's like it's pretty funny how a lot of the shows we used to watch now a lot of the the actors are in, and stuff are actually coming up with the podcast and watching them for the first time themselves, or just reviewing them again after X amount of years. And I think that's pretty cool for the fact that you get it first person from the person who played in the show and yeah, their and, point of view you know yeah exactly and this one's really great because they'll get they're, they're giving like specific details that they can remember mm -hmm. from those shoots and from what was going on in their lives like one of the episodes that they did uh, just recently they revealed that it was they started filming it on 9 11 in 2001 oh, wow. and so they were dealing with that whole uh, thing when they were doing the episode and they had to deal mentally with what was going on in America. Well, of course they're shooting this film in can this TV show in Canada and you know, what's their, what's going on with their families. And it was really cool to hear that and, and to hear their appreciation for vets and stuff like that. So 
Yeah, so we we highly recommend that. Yeah, go check them out. Yeah. That, that's Talkville. amazing. Talkville. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, since you mentioned about feedback, you want to talk about how people could submit your feedback. Absolutely. Their feedback. We're- well, of course, you are listening to us on your podcast player of choice, whatever that may be. We can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or wherever podcast uh, podcasts are out there. If you can leave us a review, we would love to have that and be able to share that and give you a little shout out. So give us a review and we'll and a rating and we'll uh, acknowledge that here on the show. Well, you can check out our website, which would be panels to pixels podcast.com. We are also on Facebook, facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Uh, we are on Twitter, and that's at Panels2Pixels, and that's Panels and the number two, Pixels. We have an email address, which is Panels2Pixels1 at gmail.com. That's Panels2Pixels1, the T-O spelled out right in the middle, the number one at gmail.com. You can find us on YouTube. All you have to do is search for panels to pixels podcast, and just, you know, if you like what we do, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. We are on Instagram at Panels 2 Pixels Podcast. That's words all spelled out. Panels 2 Pixels Podcast on Instagram. And you should check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. We highly recommend them all. Uh, one of which would be Wilhelm with Ben Beck. Uh, Ben's actually been expanding a little bit. So he's on Twitch doing uh, live streams every week. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I, th- I think it, uh, he's doing movies as well as gaming and other things as well. So check that out. Uh, Wilhelm with Ben Beck. And that uh, is on Twitch. On Twitch, he is I am Ben Beck on Twitch. So you'll find him that way. There's also the Melting Pad, Podcast Zero, and so much more. All you have to do is just go to nextlevelradioonline.com and just check out all the other podcasts there. Excellent. Coming up, we will be discussing Episode 3 of Umbrella Academy Season 3, pocket full of lightning and also hopefully we will have the first episode of she hulk season one coming up next week as well yes and where else can listeners hear us steve i can be heard on various other podcasts that our friends do that i send voice messages to and like i just said i sent a question into talk bill so hopefully that will be on there and of course you can hear me right here on panels to pixels exactly well you could also hear me on adrenaline cinema podcast and that can be found on Pyrocore Entertainment Network. Uh, still yet to release Escape from Planet of the Apes, uh, as well as Predator that Steve and I have covered from, uh, it was Predator 1987. So uh, I have to get those out this week. So look out for those. Uh, you can also hear me currently. It's on and out there in the world. Uh, I'm on the Podcast Ticket Network with our friendly uh, friend Jamie Dimmick, and we are covering sandman that's on netflix so we're doing this episodically so it's called sandman cast and that can be found on house podcastica on the podcastica network and i'll leave links in the uh the description below for the podcast so you can check that out and if you like that stuff very cool well it's the same podcast different panel different pixel yeah and i'm mark and i'm steve And this was Panel for Pixels, and we'll see you guys on the next panel. Good night. Good night.